Super Dawn, your daily live current affairs program where topical issues that border on politics, economy, sports, and sizzling national issues are analyzed. Now holds every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Super Screen Television. Let your voice be heard. Join us. Super Screen Television is now on Star Times Channel 173. Now our tentacles are extended to give you the very best of sports, news, entertainment shows, current affairs, blockbuster movies, and lots more. Tune in to Star Times Channel 173 and enjoy the very best of Super Screen Television. Now you're talking. It's a great Monday morning and the weather is still having its toe. It's a rainy season, we'll have it that way. But sports must go on right here on Super Screen Television. It's the Super Dawn Sports segment and the Nations Cup is taking a serious toll on everybody. It's been exciting games. The Cup of America is still right there. The Gold Cup is no exclusion. The Women's World Cup is still right there. So there are major top competition really, really going on all over the world. But right here in Nigeria, it's saddening to note that a lowly rated team could give us a shock. Expectedly, some of us saw it coming, but not this too soon. We'll be reviewing the games that came up and the teams 
that have qualified for the round of 16 right there in Egypt AFCON 2019. We we'll also look at reactions from Egalo, take reactions from General Raw and Joseph Yebu. Not also forgetting that the transfer window is wide open and uh, our captain Mikel Obi has gotten a club in Turkey. We'll let you know that. We'll also take a look at reward. Yes, it's always good to reward people who have done very best. The Innocent Boot Award came up over the weekend and there are very two big winners with massive money that came up and the promoters of this particular show kudos to them we'll let you know who they are and we'll look at athletics where blessing of kagbari is giving a blazing thrilling performance all through the season not also forgetting that there is transfers in europe we'll talk about them as stamp parameters my name still remain prince with the visa and they call me the duke i'm not alone this morning even though if it is wet my partners are still here to give you the very refreshing bit of sporting news. Dotu Agubiade is right in here with me. Dotu, good morning. Ah, good morning, Prince Will. Uh, it's always uh, a joyous time to come together at Stock Spot like this. But like you said the other time, uh, a whole lot of persons how they are not really happy concerning the results the Nigerian Superlugus actually had on Sunday against the Madagascar. You call them the new entrants into the Nations Cup, uh, but you should not be surprised that they are the first team to qualify for this tournament. So they are actually doing everything they've done in the past uh, in this particular tournament as well. Also with me right here is the delectable one. Dotun is statistician, I can assure you. Call him midnight, he will tell you what you need to know. But Tayo takes it very calm and easy. Tayo, Olorosho, Tayo, good morning. Good morning, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Gentlemen, let's get down to the integrity. It's no longer news that we lost against Madagascar. But what is really, really impressive is what I saw between Uganda and Egypt, more than luck. But let's start from the home front. Um, Dotu, I hold my sway and I still want to say that we're not fit to win the Nations Cup. It was prevailing. It showed yesterday in the game against Madagascar. Ah, well, coming from the skipper of the Nigerian national team in person of uh, John Mikelobi before the start of the tournament, actually said something that really caught my fancy. He said that uh, the team that is actually very fit with a match the winner of the tournament. Uh, but we are, what we saw yesterday showed that Nigeria is not fit enough uh, to actually win this particular one. Uh, I saw a team that actually approached the game with like cardastical attitude, uh, with complacency, believing that they've qualified fight already all they need to play for is just to go to the field of play and make the game count and not do any other thing and it is really really disheartening to see our dead nigerian national team actually uh, perform woefully like that on, on the field of play against a side that are not matched to them when it comes to football uh, in the world but uh, I, I still actually hold my uh, my faith that it is a nation's cup to win for the super eagles like coming from the players and from the skipper and every other person who actually thought about that game they said it was indeed a poor performance but they think that it is still a wake-up call for them to go further and win the tournament we're always calling for wake-up call when can we keep moving on and dreaming tire um a lot has been said about the game but my drawback is what janet ross says that he is not ashamed to lose to madagascar and you you, you did ask a question before we came on air what is the rating i am i am taken aback <laughs> if it was a nigerian coach i'm very sure by now they'll be calling for his head well, for me, um, like Dawson said, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Like, this morning when I came, <laughs> I was actually throwing <laughs> a joke at him that I do you still feel we can win? And he was affirmative. The truth is that... Come again. The two was affirmative. That we are going to win. The nation's <laughs> okay. score. But, but the truth I'll is... I get there. As a Nigerian, there is nothing to be patriotic about. Our team is not good. That's just the simple truth about it. Because... The truth is that when you look at the world of football, there are some teams that cannot beat Brazil. There are some teams that cannot beat Argentina. But for me, I, uh, Madagascar, what is the, uh, the rating in African football? You saw them yesterday when they beat us. They were jubilating as if they have won, they have come. And Nigeria, we are not even ashamed of it. And coming to our coach, I don't expect, it, it boils down to the administrators because Stephen Kerch was a Nigerian. He won this particular trophy for us. And um, I, I just feel if you want to get a foreign coach, we should, we should get a world-class coach. And all these, all these um, out-of-job clothes that we always get. I, I don't see because there was a time we have Betty Boat, uh, Lagerback, all these guys, they are just collecting money. And it's, it's quite unfortunate that such a thing is coming out from me. By now, you should be sacked. Uh, let, let me quickly say well, something uh, on the statement me, of the coach. Uh, I, will, I will take you jointly. 
are you aware that the North Africans are not taking anything for a ride? Of course, the North Africans now, are putting everything now, right. Now, the question I want to ask you is this. We all agree that the fittest team would win the initial Of course. Sport. We've seen three games of the Super Eagles. Mm. With the put up, with the show up, the North Africans has actually put up. Does the Super Eagles have a chance of winning the Nations Cup? Uh, well, uh, let me start from the coach. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, the coach of a team like Nigeria comes to say that he's not ashamed to lose against a team like Madagascar. If um, well, on the way around, the wife was from Madagascar, so I if, understand. If if uh, I happen to be one among the administrators, talking about the Nigerian Football Federation board we will call for him to actually come and explain that to us. That if at all you play against a team like Madagascar and you said to lose by two goals to zero, not by lone goal, and he said it's not a shameful thing, definitely you don't understand the level Nigeria is when it comes to football in Africa. That means he cannot think of the team to success. That is what it actually states about. Uh, the statement states about the man. Mm. That he doesn't know what it takes for a team like Nigeria to, pari uh, to participate in a Nations Cup qualify and win it or even get to at least the semi-final that we know it is a regular uh, stage and coming out to say that losing against Madagascar is not a shameful thing I actually need to call for his head at this particular time but talking about the North Africans and the East African as well as the West African if you look at the competition so far the North Africans have actually shown to a large extent that they are in this tournament to win this particular one Ever since the history of African Nations Cup, Egypt remains the holy team that have hosted the Nations Cup three times and won it. So if I thought they still actually show enough zeal and hunger to win this particular, we can see it on the field of play. They have maximum nine points and in that particular group. And Morocco, they are actually doing everything right as well. They've had six points so far. And uh, if uh, they are going to play today against South Africa. So it, it is all about North Africans against West Africans. Though the South African and the East Africans, they are minus when it comes to football in Africa. The best two uh, regions in Africa, they are the North and the West. Okay. But the North and are getting it right against the West as we speak. All right, let me quickly bring some comments made by top stars within the team. One is still active, the other one is X. Igalo says the defeat is a wake-up call for Eagles. Also, there's no easy team in the competition. I hear you, like I want to say. And Joseph Yibo, the former team captain, says Super Eagles did not show enough hunger for victory against Madagascar. Now, Tayo, the issue is this. I watched that game from the blast of the whistle. In all ramification, in all facets, on the field of play yesterday, the Eagles didn't come to the party. In sport kicks, in corner kicks, fighting spirit, team spirit, it was all zero. Well, for me, like I've said earlier, those guys, they, they probably should have gone with a Nigerian, uh, a player from the Nigerian League. They would have done us proud because if you look at the last edition of this Nations Cup that we won, look at the Sunday over, all these guys, they are nobody and they play with their blood. All these guys, the truth is we shouldn't deceive ourselves. Mm. Nigeria doesn't have a team. We don't have a team. We cannot be saying, uh, even at the end of the no, day. No, we have a team, a team that is not fit. <laughs> yeah, because That's at the end of the day, somebody was telling me yesterday that if, if you play against Ghana, we can't play Ghana. The fact that Ghana possibly we are going to play against Ghana. The truth yes, is Ghana that or Cameroon, uh, whether going. Ghana drew against Benin Republic, we saw what they played. They were playing as a team. Nigeria is not a team. I saw the game against Ghana and Cameroon. It was all mother love that went against but, Ghana. So, Ni Nigeria is a team. I want to actually differ from you a bit. Well, 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 you, I, I quite agree with you that they did not show much energy hunger, pace and power on the field of play. But if you look at what we saw, they actually spring passes together more Not than ever. No, 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 I'm not and making excuse for this team. The midfield, the the midfield, the midfield yeah. was totally dead. That was no, no, the midfield came wasn't out. When did it came out? The midfield wasn't dead. Tell me what the midfield wasn't tell me what was everybody in that midfield. Yesterday. The midfield wasn't dead. So if you, so sometimes in football, uh, to, when, when you play against a side that actually play 10 men behind the, behind the ball, it actually seems difficult. But what you need to show, you need to show. Yeah, the Madagascar didn't play ten men behind the ball. They were ten men they behind were, the ball. They were, Each time they, they were marking, on counter. They were on counter, and that, that was that, that they are always on counter. That was but the what tactics. Made them, what that made them be on tactics. counter is always they are ten men behind the ball. So when they have the ball, they go on the counter. That was the tactics that was expected in a row to but find the strategy. That, to, but the truth is that Mourinho does not win every time. All right, and gentlemen, let's go on. Let's go on. I know we're going to talk more about this in 
the afternoon when sport base comes up some of the results for yesterday game uganda lost to egypt 2-0 fantastic game energy sapping game zimbabwe also lost to dr congo but they did qualify burundi lost to guinea and madagascar defeated nigeria 2-0 so as it is right now madagascar and nigeria has qualified um, having seven point and six point respectively with guinea joining them as the best loser team um, kenya senegal tanzania algeria namibia will play Ivory Coast. Doctor, let me ask you, South Africa, Morocco. The South Africans, have not, they've not come to the party and they'll be playing today. Uh, they'll be playing today. They got the better of Namibia by long goal. They lost their first game to uh, Ivory Coast and they'll be playing their last game against Morocco. A draw for them will actually see them through to the next yeah. round. But a loss for them, uh, we actually kicked them out of the tournament. But with three points, the states has stand a chance based on the permutation and uh, 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 permutation of the other groups talking about are the points at which and go difference the other teams that actually strive for third place has at the end of have at the end of the tournament. Okay, all that game coming up today involves Kenya, Senegal, the favorite on paper, but they've not been doing too well. You also have Tanzania, Algeria. I'm particularly concerned about Tanzania because we have our own oh, Emmanuel Amunike right in there. Do you see them making it into the round of 16? Well, if they can make, if they can get a win today, but uh, it's not surprising to me that they, they are not really doing very well because they are debutants. Mm. But it's not an excuse. But for me, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Amunika has done a very good job. They've been trying, but the try have not been good <laughs> successful. Enough. All right, that's all we can take at the Nations Cup. We'll bring you much more on the whole total package of the Nations Cup and Sports Beat. Let's talk about reward. Just over the weekend, Inusel Boots Award came up, and I must commend Ojukiri. It's been wonderful taking its sole effort to uh, compensate and reward players who have done this particular league in the country proud. And the winners were Nasara United, Ibrahim Sanusi, and Umfon Ndo, uh, 10 goal each of Aqua United. Now, Dr. you were there. Uh, it was a very unique occasion. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, over the past days, we've been clamoring for our players in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Uh, been rewarded with all of those things and we never saw it coming and if you can remember this informed though has been a player that actually has been wonderful remember the height he has seen with Higginba International in history of Nigerian professional football league he is the only player to have scored more than 20 goals 23 precisely and he is the only player in the last five years that did represent the Nigerian football league world in the continent, 29 goals in the UEFA cha in the CAF Champions League with Ayimba. And having left Ayimba to join Aqua United, a whole lot of persons are saying that it's really going to be pretty tough for him to actually uh, replicate the kind of form he had with Ayimba. But coming to uh, Aqua United, it was wonderful. He had uh, how, many, how many goals last season? 10 goals, Ten goals. Uh, uh, from the average uh, league. And at the time, he was out injured. Uh, for Sunusu Ibrahim, a young lad, you can see on the picture we saw on the screen that the guy is indeed young. And he actually put up a very good show. His second season in the Nigerian Professional Football League as a young lad. And he actually competes against a veteran of the league in person of Unformodo. As uh, Sunusu Ibrahim, we should look out for him. I think uh, a lot of persons will be actually calling for him to join their club. Let me ask you before you uh, conclude, Dr. These are top scorers. Of Why didn't we take them to Egypt? Mm -hmm. That calls for questioning. Uh, of course, that calls for question. You know, before the start of the Nations Cup, we discussed these things that Ghana Throw is not really putting the Nigerian Professional Football League in the picture. What uh, Steven Okichuku Kechi did to the Nigerian Professional Football League, he made Nigerians to start loving the league again by putting five players in the Nigerian Professional Football League in the team and giving two or three among them to actually showcase what they can do on the okay. field of play. And that was indeed a creditable one. But for Gunnar Thor, I'm actually going to call for his head on this one because he has not been... You don't need to right. call for his head. Yeah, he, he has already called for his own head because he's not performing. Quickly, let's talk some athletics. Um, Tayo, Bless Nokagbare is on the pleasant front. Um, she's showing that she's on top of her game and just uh, incredible... Bless the Belgrade. In the pre Fortune GL, she won it in 22.05 seconds. Now, second or not on IWF 2019 list. And you would want to imagine what she's bringing to the table. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one for Nigeria. And um, if you look at it very well, you discover that apart from football, this is the only sport, this is another sport where we actually all sweat. And it's a good one for blessing of Agbari, good one for our career, and good one for Nigeria. I just hope we'll have someone that will step into the shoes. Yeah. Because over the years, we've been hearing about this name. 
and by now we're supposed to have somebody that will step into the before she burns out. Uh, you know, you know what makes me happy about the whole thing is the fact that she did compete against the two best in the world, and she won them, and not with just a slim margin, with a very huge margin. Mm. She had two, 22.05 seconds. Why the other two actually had 22.18 and 22.22 and 22.22 seconds? It shows that he's actually ready for this particular season. Remember, we all called for for for, for, uh, for uh, uh, call out for her last year during the uh, Asaba 2018 that she never actually came to the party too. Dr. Are you aware that all the records made in Asaba 2018 Of course, on the track and feed cancelled, except for off the track that uh, is, uh, that is That is monumental. Because of all the complaints of half the athletes on the, on the track, they complained that there is a particular hole at the middle of the track. Yes. They all said that. All the Nigerians and the international athletes said that during the course of the yes. tournament. And this actually led to the poor performance of some of the athletes. All right. Let's talk some tennis right now before we go to two transfers on our list. Aaron Okodri has just gotten a unique contract. Dr. I hope some of these are athletes overseas will replicate what they're getting to help sports in their different field back in the country. Of course, they need to do that. Uh, that uh, congratulations to him. He was 10 years with Joola, uh, Kitten Complain, and now he has joined uh, get with the kitchen complaint up on a three-year deal. I think that he just needs to actually keep what he's doing, uh, uh, what he's doing right, and he should keep doing it. Uh, and he needs to come home and actually affect the younger generation. Some did affect him when he was growing up. So what he need, he need to do positively, you know, he needs to come and actually affect the younger generation. I think affecting so, is a statement. It should impact people. Impact. Within, thank you very much. That, that's the right word. That's the right environment. Word. Impact people within his own immediate environment yeah. and beyond. So if he can do that, definitely in the near future, we should be looking out for another Arena Cordray. All right, talking about transfers, let's quickly look at what is happening to Neymar. He's not having a swell time in the Brazilian team, in the Copa um, America, but the club says they're not willing to sell him title. Neymar is eager to go back to complete the Suarez Messi formation. But the club says you ain't going nowhere. Well, for me, uh, I think Neymar is a joker because uh, <laughs> part of the reason why he left Barcelona was Messi. Yeah. And Messi is there. So I don't see reason why he's going back to. He's probably confused. There's a saying that if you can't go forward, come back to where you're coming because from. I don't know. Messi is still in Barcelona and he's not ready to leave now. So I don't know. I don't see reason why he's going back to Barcelona. If you just go either to Juventus or Real Madrid. <laughs> All right, still on transfer list, our own captain, Amiable John Mekal Obi, is moving to Turkey and Dotu. It's a good move for him because age is not on his side. Of course, age is not on his side. And to sign a two year contract with an option of a year, a year plus is a fantastic one for the skipper of the Nigerian uh, national team. By the time he'll be running out of the contract, the two years he'll be 34. And with the option of one year, he'll be 35. And uh, he has brothers in the team that will actually welcome him. Uh, the, the, the former, uh, still Nigerian national, uh, international player, but not part of this particular team. Talking about okay, your Nazis in that team and Anthony Wakeme. So if you can actually get there and cement his leads, he should start kicking the ball again. All right, we got to go. But before we go, let me quickly ask Tayo. Andre Roberts is moving to Juventus. Is it a compact team, considering the fact that Ronaldo is still there? Well, for me, uh, I think they should be able to do something next season. I'm hoping that Ronaldo. We just win one more Champions League. Before <laughs> all right. Tayo is hoping. That's the tall dream if you ask me. That's all we can take on Super John Sports. Dotu, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks as well. And Tayo, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, we're getting on this break. When we come back, Blessed and Olamide will be rounding up the Super Don Show. Just stay tuned.